Previously in round sailing, we navigated in a narrow channel to get to the Whale Island. Then we visited the largest village in Gunayala, Ustupo, where we tried to get hold of internet, but without any luck. Instead we saw crocodiles swimming not too far from the boat. Because of the issues with the engine, we were happy to have wind so we could sail to our next destination. Yeah, so when we left the stupid this morning, it was pretty windy. We had 18 knots and uh, we had the wind in from the port side on the first leg. Uh, so it's pretty wet the first leg out. We went out maybe. I don't know, two hours before we made a tack. First we thought we needed to be uh, yeah, beating all day today, but it turns out that the wind turned a bit into a to our favor, so we only needed to do one tack out from the stupid. Right now we have a reef that we're going to pass pretty close on our starboard side. We have about 20 miles to go. Maybe a bit more. My fix on the engine turned out to work alright. This leak from one of the injectors is sealed now. Uh, but we don't want to push it so we try to not use the engine much at all now. Until we can get it properly fixed. The yellow parts on the chart are reefs, and the breaking waves show where they are. How's it going? Mm, not 100% feeling well, but it's alright. Wind in from 80 degrees, almost broad reach, no, beam reach, sorry, beam reach. almost beam reach. So it's not a very relaxed sailing because we have to pay a lot of attention to the navigation all the time because of all of the reefs. It was a long time ago since we had waves coming on the side of the boat and that made me a little nauseous. But as the wind turned more to the east, the sailing got much more comfortable. So according to the, the chart here, it should be 8 meters in total. And right now we have 24 meters on the echo sounder in total. So that means that we are not in the correct position on the chart. How many miles do we have left in total? Uh, we have about 9 left. So 9 nautical yeah. miles left. So tired. <laughs> sailing in a channel between reefs now. There's reefs on this side and also on that side. This channel is about yeah, not very wide. Four or five hundred meters. Now there's coming another squall in front of us. Hope we will uh, pass us before we get into it. This is the, I think, the third one for today. The weather been, it's been quite unstable since we arrived. 
just decided not to anchor there because it was quite unprotected and uh, not very rolly, a lot of swell coming from both sides. So it was very rolly. So plan B is to go now uh, two nautical miles towards uh, land and there is a cup an island group out here and we will anchor outside one island called Mamaraga which is also a pretty straightforward uh, course there uh, it's not very hard to anchor It was hard to spot the reefs when it was cloudy and the water was dark. At first we dropped the anchor way too close to the reef and we didn't realize until the sun came out briefly through the clouds. After re-anchoring we finally found a good spot. Next morning we woke up to heavy rain and wind, so we stayed down below working and fixing with the boat. We had an ulu coming by and it was Arkin from the neighboring island. He showed us his wife's molas, which are the handicraft that the women make in Gunayala. They layer colored fabrics and then cut out different shapes and forms. They are very pretty, and we bought two from Arkin, which would be a nice memory of our time in Gunayala. Arkin also brought us freshly made guna bread, and we bought some bananas and coconuts. And I got to try paddling his ulu, Pretty okay. We've, we've left, uh, what was the name of the place? Mamaraga, Smart which Mama. is a part of uh, Playa Un Chico. Um, we, had, we woke up to a squall and squall's just been going on this whole morning. Now it's almost 11 and we decided to go even if there's no wind because there won't be any wind the coming days either. So we decided to go and use the engine we hope that Yuan's uh, fix will um, will stay as it is, so we can go. So we are now planning to go to Nargana, which is a village, you can say, in the beginning of the Gulf of San Blas. Now we had something falling down below. And um, it's uh, what we've heard and what they say in the books and the guys we've read, is that it's a more modern village. So maybe we can find internet there. Uh, we have uh, 23 nautical miles to go to Nargana. Uh, if we don't make it, if it's like too far or if we're going too slow, we have two other anchorages before that that we can go to before it gets dark. So that's the plan for today. Now we're just navigating uh, next to uh, two reefs. You can see out here, you see the waves breaking over them. The engine performed good without any problems, and the repairs held up fine. Of course we got a massive squall, as we were coming in between all the islands and reefs. 
and it was raining so hard we couldn't see a thing in front of the boat. This is Nargana, infamous among cruisers for its extremely loud generator. But the weather was nice and we got some laundry done. Started to upload a video, got some groceries and installed new LED lights inside the cupboards in the galley. Heading up uh, Rio Diablo, and uh, here at the entrance is very shallow. We need to go slow. It's kind of hard to see how deep it is, but they say it will open up a bit deeper when we get further in. Devil's River lays just next to Nargana, and it's okay to go inside with the dinghy and the outboard. The Gunas come here to get fresh water, do laundry and take showers, but also for working in the jungle and getting building materials and to cultivate. The Devil River. It's very beautiful. Full of palm trees. And there's also full of alligators here, crocodiles. But the, the ones in the rivers are smaller than the ones out at sea. And a lot of birds. The current is pretty strong. Yeah, at the moment. But it's really beautiful here. A lot of birds, probably some snakes. We haven't seen any yet though. You saw a monkey, right? Yeah. He was running away fast. Now, according to what we have read, most of these rivers contains a lot of gold and it should be pretty easy to extract it if you're panning for gold in these rivers but uh, it's illegal to pan for gold here 
even for the Kunayalas. It's drifting pretty fast. some obstacles up ahead. We don't know why it's called the Devil's River, because it was so serene and peaceful. It was a really nice experience to explore the jungle by dinghy because it was so different from walking and hiking. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment below and a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos and we hope to see you next week.